Let us uh, turn our attention to this uh, interesting rugby story which came to light from across the Tasman and it's to do with this um, uh, decision that um, uh, surprised a lot of people of the head of Australian rugby, the chairman of Australian rugby, to give a phone call and have a chat to Eddie Jones, now an unemployed, as we know, uh, international rugby coach. Why would he be doing this? Oh, is there anything to do with the fact that the Wallabies have had one of their poorest seasons on record? Just five wins from 14 test matches and uh, blowing that big win in their last test against Wales to allow the Welsh uh, to come back and win, I think it was 34-31 or something to that effect. Anyway, the man that broke the story is Tom Deason, who is the uh, rugby writer for the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, and uh, he joins us now to shed some light on this. So... Um, what was this all about, uh, Tom? Uh, what was um, the reason behind, do you think, this call? Uh, Australian rugby are serious about trying to entice Eddie Jones back to Australian rugby in some way, shape or form. I guess the big question is whether they would have um, the guts to do it a year out from a World Cup and replace you know, Dave Rennie with someone like an Eddie Jones. I don't think that would happen um, so close out to a World Cup, but I think in terms of succession planning... You've got a guy who loves Australian rugby, who knows the landscape back to front, who, as we understand, is open to the idea. Um, they just want to gauge his interest as to whether he would be available in some way, shape or form. But in terms of what that role is, you know, whether it would even be as a consultant next year alongside Dave Rennie, which could pose a few problems as well. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're just sounding him out. But the initial contact would suggest that um, a plan is in motion to try and offer Eddie something in the future. And are you fairly sure that what you've just said was uh, an issue that was raised between McLennan and Jones in that telephone conversation? Uh, so, in terms of what? So, uh, you're saying that, uh, are you speculating here or in that conversation between Jones and McLennan, McLennan was sounding out Jones to see whether he's interested in coming back to Australian rugby in some capacity? Yeah, that's correct. Look, the conversation was more or less a, um, a, a catching up of sorts. They've, you know, these guys have spoken before in an unofficial capacity. Eddie was out, you know, in Australia for the England series, so you know, McLennan has spoken to Eddie before, not in, in terms of an official capacity. They just wanted to get a gauge of where his head is at. Um, nothing formal was tabled in terms of an offer or, or saying this is what we would like you to do. But it was more a conversation of getting a gauge from Eddie whether or not he would be interested in coming back to Australian rugby. I'm unclear whether he would. You know, like there was no suggestion from Hamish McLennan whether um, Eddie said yes or no because he has a lot of offers on the table, but it was just a, a first conversation to sort of get that wheels in motion. I couldn't imagine uh, news of this conversation has gone down terribly well with Dave Rennie, for example. I'm tipping it probably hasn't. Uh, look, Dave Rennie has spoken about hoping to, to receive a contract extension post the World Cup. I think he's possibly resigned to the fact that that won't be happening. Um, he's, to our understanding, looking at potential options elsewhere. Um, Rugby Australia hasn't moved on that or, or given any clarity as to whether they would give Rennie an extension beyond 2023. So, look, Dave Rennie hasn't spoken publicly since all the Eddie Jones news has happened. He's just come back from a European tour and is planning for next year. But it would be intriguing to see his his views on, on this all being sort of courted, uh, you know, to the side. I mean, Jones does have this fairly amiable public persona, and I know from my point of view, dealing with him, you know, phone interviews like this uh, at various times, whether he is in Japan or England, he was always fairly amenable. But then you hear stories about players who have been coached by him and that this strict, stern, disciplinarian approach that he takes, uh, and you can't help but feel that that might have been a factor in the decision of... Uh, the RFU not to renew his contract. Do you, do you think that kind of type and style of coaching is wanted or needed in Australian rugby? It's a very, very good question. Uh, undoubtedly, if Eddie Jones came back in Australian rugby, it would be highly controversial. There are super rugby franchises who um, would probably oppose the move. Uh, you know, you, d you just speak to people uh, sort of every day in this job and, and they're sort of there are people who remember how Eddie Jones even was 20 years ago when he was in charge of the Wallabies and how he ran the ship then. You do hear the stories of his disciplinary you know, um, ways and, and, and how he likes to get the best out of his teams, and, and he's a very hard taskmaster. So 
Um, the question is whether Australian rugby is so desperate for a coach of his calibre. I mean, you, you can't argue with his World Cup record. Um, his, his stuff with England was pretty good, albeit that sort of fell away in the last few years. But, um, yeah, it would be very controversial. I don't... Uh, look, it's a question for Rugby Australia whether they would gamble on someone like Eddie or, or sort of try and bring in a heir apparent like a Dan McKellar or, or bring in someone else from afar who's maybe not as intense as Eddie Jones. There's a story doing the rounds here, uh, whether it's apocryphal or not, I don't know, but at the Cricket World Cup last year in Dubai, uh, John Mitchell, who was uh, working with Jones with the English team, his son, Daryl, was playing for New Zealand in that World Cup and Mitchell asked if he could have a couple of days off to go and see Daryl play in the World Cup and, and Jones said no. And um, uh, Mitchell now is think, looking for, has been looking for work elsewhere since then. Uh, so that's kind of another insight into the fact that he does run a pretty tight ship. The other thing here which is I find interesting is, OK, the personnel have changed, but um, if my memory serves me correctly, the Australian Rugby Union essentially terminated his contract, sacked him basically in 2005 didn't they would you want to go back to a coach you've sacked well uh, that's a very good point um yeah he was sacked in 2005 a run of poor results post the world cup eddie jones has spoken about how he made a poor call to stay on beyond the 2003 world cup when he should have left after that world cup I think what we've seen since then is that there's enough body of work to suggest that Eddie Jones is a different coach and he's developed his coaching style. I mean, he helped South Africa in the 2007 World Cup. We know that his work with Japan in the 2015 World Cup was, you know, widely, you know, um, lauded. His work in the 2019 World Cup, getting England to a final that people didn't expect them to. So um, there is a sense that, yeah, sure, you are going back to a to a guy who was punted in 2005 but it's almost 20 years since that a lot has happened since then um you know a guy like michael checker he was effectively pushed out after the 2019 world cup but you said to me right now that michael Checker will never coach the wallabies again i I wouldn't be betting uh, you know you'd be a brave man to say that that would never happen again in the future given that coaching sort of is a bit of swings and roundabouts Mm. inevitably it brings us back to dave rennie What's the verdict on Rennie's year in 2022 at the helm of the Wallabies? I think you have to give Dave Rennie a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. They had an incredible amount of injuries, which is being subjected to a review as is. If you can lay the blame at the Wallabies or the Super Rugby franchises, but you can't argue with the fact that there was an incredibly high number of injuries within that camp. So the likes of Quade Cooper, Samu Karevi... Huge, big-name players who are going to be very pivotal at the World Cup for Australia weren't available for Rennie. Yet, in a season where they won five tests from 14 matches, it's not a great result on paper that they got very close to Ireland. Um, They should have beaten France as well on that end-of-season tour. Mm. Probably deserved to beat New Zealand in that Bledisloe 1, save for a a very controversial (laughs) decision at the end. Yes, exactly. They beat South Africa, beat Argentina... um, Highs and lows. It's so really hard to get a gauge on where this team is at, but I think if they have everyone at their disposal, um, they go a little bit better. But Dave Rennie's under no illusions. It's a results-driven game. His win record is the lowest of any, you know, Wallabies coach in the professional era. So he, he understands that. Um, that trajectory needs to change next year heading into a World Cup. Yeah, it's a good example, I suppose, of how brutal, uh, bold statistics can be. When you dig a little deeper, as you say, um, you get a slightly different view of how he's gone. It's ironic, I suppose, that uh, with a lot of criticism here of uh, Ian Foster, which you'd be aware of, and many calls from inside and outside of rugby, uh, sanctum of uh, rugby circles, for him to be replaced, many are lamenting the fact that they didn't appoint Rennie to the coaching position after Steve Hansen retired, so here he is under a bit of threat in Australia, and we're lamenting the fact that he's not the All Black coach in some quarters. It's a strange world, isn't it? Sport these days. Well, it is, and 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 coaches. Sorry, you know, governing bodies like Rugby Australia were very clever in that they got on the front foot there in 2018, 2019, and planted the seeds to get Dave Rennie post Michael Checker. New Zealand Rugby sat on their hands and didn't do that. They wanted Dave Rennie. When push came to shove at the end of it, they, they approached him and, and were sort of gauging his interest. And he was so far down the rabbit hole with Rugby Australia that he couldn't back out of that deal with Raylene Castle. So that's an example of what happens in this time of year. There's a number of different coaching positions up for grabs post World Cup, you would imagine. I think Scott Robertson's an absolute lock to coach the All Blacks post-C and Foster, regardless of what happens at the World Cup. 
And, uh, yeah, but a very fascinating time in terms of the coaching merry-go-round, particularly with Eddie Jones being sacked. Just a final thought, uh, Tom, on a, a slightly different matter. The success of the Socceroos at the Football World Cup, uh, which has been one of the sporting highlights, clearly, of the Australian sporting year right across the board, uh, is probably <laughs> not going to help um, the drive of Australian Rugby Union to recruit more youngsters and more people into the sport of rugby, uh, given the phenomenal success of the Socceroos and presumably the boost that uh, football will get in Australia from the success. Uh, look, there will be a short-term boost for sure. However, I think that soccer still does have a very long way to go. Um, they just can't produce as many high-quality games in Australia. And Australians, have, they've had the A-League for a long time. It hasn't really kicked on to where administrators would like. The difference is that rugby's got a couple of really big carrots for Australian rugby in terms of the Lions series in 2025 and a Home World Cup. Um, and then at Olympic Games in 2032, West Sevens will be there as well. So um, in terms of a big runway that Rugby Australia is building towards, I think they would probably rather be um, that than mm. soccer. However, you know, it will be interesting in the, in the next month or year to sort of see whether that soccer ruse, the residue from that excellent performance in Qatar sort of kicks on and, and goes from there. It, it will be interesting. Mm, for sure. Uh, Tom, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Much appreciated into this uh, fascinating insight into the comings and going in Australian rugby. You have a good day. You too. Cheers.